Okay, as I said, I am going to record uh, this video for the atheists uh, and agnostics. There is a theory, um, by the way, shalom means peace. I come to you in peace. <laughs> Live long and prosper. Uh, that was stupid. There is a theory floating around that says that the uh, universe is eternal. There's another theory that says that um, the Big Bang happens over and over and over again because the universe, uh, you know, boom, boom, yeah, boom, and it just keeps happening over and over and over, and this time, uh, whether it did last time or not, uh, just so happened to have spawned real life, um, etc. Uh, so, those are the theories, and I want to just really quickly um, kind of point out through NASA, atheist and agnostic studies, uh, not Christian, mind you, that uh, the universe is not eternal. It had a beginning. In the beginning, there was nothing, um, and so on. And uh, this is all from science. It does tie into the Bible. The Bible and science go hand in hand, and uh, science is merely the observational study of cause and effect. Uh, so let's get into it. Um... I don't know the years, I apologize, but if you would like to, on your own free time, look up in the encyclopedia or just a very simple Google search, uh, look up the dates, you can do that, but I'll give you the names. Um, Edwin Hubble, uh, this name may sound familiar to you because of the Hubble telescope. Um, he was looking up into the sky through this telescope, and um, he uh, discovers that the universe is expanding, very important note. Um, and this was later uh, confirmed by Albert Einstein and Robert Jastrow. Uh, Robert Jastrow, he's passed away now. Actually, they're all passed away now. But uh, Robert Jastrow, he was the um, founder of the Goddard Institute at NASA. Um, I don't think necessarily you can say he was atheist, but I do believe he was agnostic. Um, I'll get more into that in a moment. So what they what they all confirmed um, and agreed on was the fact that the universe was expanding, um, and not only is it expanding, uh, we have also discovered that it is uh, excelling, accelerating. Um, it is not slowing down. Now, if it was slowing down, that would mean that it would eventually stop and you know collapse in on itself, um, as that theory says. Boom, boom, boom. Um, that is impossible now, especially since it is actually expanding and accelerating, meaning it's moving farther away from itself, there's no hope of it coming back together. So, um, that theory's out the window now, we can forget about that. <clears throat> now, they calculated, or at least a couple of them did, um, that if we were to hit a cosmic rewind button on the, uh, the expansion of the universe, or the cosmos, th everything would collapse into a point of absolute nothing. Uh, there would be no nature. Now, nature is com uh, composed of three things. Uh, time, space, and material. Um, sp and quick definition of space, it's the room to be able to move. A matter is um, what this table and this uh, camera is made out of. It's material. Um, you know, nature is everything that is in existence. It's reality, uh, and so on. So, um... Here's the thing. If that were so, that means that the universe had a beginning. Now, in order to have a beginning, a lot of y'all are going to be like, oh, straw man argument, whatever. I'm just trying to be quick with this and make you think. Um, if there is a beginning, there had to be a beginner. Now, why could it not have been just something random? I heard Christopher Hitchens, who has uh, recently passed away, um, I think it was due to cancer, or something. I'm not sure. Um, he stated that uh, one time he was in, he was in a debate with a man named uh, Dr. Frank Turek um, about the existence of God and whether or not the universe was created. Uh, he stated that uh, he told his either daughter or niece, it was a relative, that um, you know she asked you know how did we all get here you know and he said well you know everything was packed really tightly in a very you know tight manner, uh, much like a uh, suitcase would. Uh, hold a lot of clothes and it just exploded one day. The problem with that is, well, where did that come from? You know, evolution, everything, still, back, you know, all these theories that do not involve a creator has the issue of, okay, well, where did that come from? 
Okay, well, where did that come from? Okay, who started that? So we have to go back all the way to the absolute beginning. Now, in order for there to have been a beginner, it's like, well, where did he come from? Or it. Um, this is where Je Robert Jestro comes in again. Now, remember, this guy is from NASA. He was also an agnostic or atheist. I think more so that he was agnostic. He wrote that um, he believes that because of science, we can now scientifically prove that the supernatural is a scientific fact. Now, a lot of people get kind of nervous with the word supernatural because it sounds kind of mystical, you know, ghosts, zombies, you know, vampires, werewolves. They, um... They, they fail to know, really, though, that the uh, definition of supernatural isn't so mystical. Supernatural really, in very simple terms, means something outside of nature. And remember, nature is within the boundaries of uh, time, space, and material, so the supernatural dwells outside of that realm. Now, I will, I will uh, make a point to note that a spirit uh, is considered a supernatural uh, existing being. The Bible, the Judeo-Christian Bible, states that God is a spirit. That's important because in order for someone to have created everything, time, space, and uh, matter, from nothing, they had to be very, very powerful. They had to be personal in order to decide to do this. They had to be supernatural. There's no nature, so they had to be outside of nature. And um, because of that reason, he is, in essence, the source, uh, the uncaused cause, the um, beginner of the beginning, so whatever phrase you want to use. Now, with that said, um, I believe that that is enough to get you thinking, well, okay, these two theories that the universe is eternal and that uh, the universe uh, continuously uh, creates itself again and again and again, um, I think that that is enough evidence to show just through logic and reasoning that, you know, those two theories are out the window. We can stop thinking that, we can stop believing that. I'll go as far as to say, too, that you do not get order from chaos. You need some kind of direction. Um, and so he, I believe, had to be involved. And, and, and let me state, I do believe in the Big Bang. I believe in the Big Bang Afterglow. I'll get that in a minute. I believe in the Big Bang Afterglow that was discovered. I believe that the Big Bang did happen. I just believe I know who caused it to happen. And with that said, um, I believe that we are the uh, product, so to speak, of intelligent design. So I say let the evidence lead you to where it will. Um, I can't make you believe that there is a creator, but I think that there is enough evidence. However, let me state this real quick before I end this video. This is merely only scratching the surface and the beginning of what we know as the full argument for a creator. There's tons of stuff out there. This is literally a very small section. Like I said in a previous video, if you did not watch uh, my... Um, updates, uh, news, video, whatever I'm going to call it, <laughs> um, I stated that I'm not going to focus on this. I just get little teeny bits out there. Uh, I think, let's see here, I've spent nine minutes recording this and editing, it'll be shorter. Um, so that's just the beginning, okay? I'm trying to break away all the garbage that we've accumulated uh, for as far as theories and philosophies, and I'm trying to get back to the, um, the actual truth of the matter that I believe is the truth. Um, with that said, uh, discussions open if you anyone would like to join in or whatever, um, and be looking for more videos, not in the near future necessarily, but definitely in the future. Shalom.